Using Newton's method, I want to estimate pi. We're going to start with the function f of x is tangent of x. x0 will just be 3, and we're going to take um, a couple steps to get to a good approximation of pi. Okay, so just so we are clear, um, pi is about 3.1. Four one five nine two six five three five eight nine. So we'll just run it up to five nine. Okay. So let's see how good we can get. Um, okay. So first step is finding the derivative. So that will just be secant squared. And we have x sub n plus one is x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. Okay, so that's x sub n minus tangent of x sub n over secant squared x sub n. We said we're starting with x0 being 3. So x1 is x0 minus tangent of x0 over secant squared of x0. Okay. x0 we said is 3 minus tangent of 3 over secant squared 3. And if we enter that in the calculator we get about 3.139 seven one so pi is about three point one four one five nine so it's pretty close so let's go try this another time x2 now is x1 minus tangent of x1 over secant squared x1 x1 is three point one three nine seven one if you plug that in, we end up getting 3.14159. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, so um, if we did this more, a couple more steps, we'll get an even better approximation of pi. But for our purposes, this is more than enough. Next we'll be doing another problem, but this time we will be finding two real solutions using Newton's method. So we're going to find our function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 2. And we want to find the solution to when f of x is equal to 0. So we need a couple starting points. Okay, so we want two real solutions. That means we want two x zeros. So why don't we just pick um, x zero being a half and x zero being two and a half. So you're probably wondering how did I come up with this? Um, it's always nice to kind of have a rough feeling um, for where the root is. So like if you get, you know, kind of close to the root, then eventually using Newton's method, you'll get to the root. Okay. So let's start with X equals a half. We know that X of N plus one is X of N minus F of X of N over F prime of X of N. So we'll just plug it in. And then the derivative, well, we'll just use the power rule. It's 4xn cubed minus 6x sub n squared minus 2 times x sub n minus 2. Okay, we said x0 is a half. 
So we'll just say we'll be plugging in x um, one half for all the x of n's in here, and to get x one, that would just be see, point six four zero six two five, and then for x two, we will be plugging x of x of one in for x of n. So again, into this formula, we get point six three zero one seven. Let's say if we do this one more time, x sub 3, we get 0 0.63012. So as you can see now, the solution is getting closer and closer to 0 0.63. And let's say if we want to try one more time, we would still get you know, roughly the same answer. So it's safe to say that um, one of the solutions is about... 0.63012. And if we start with x0 being 2.5, for x1, we'll plug in 2.5 in and for all the x of n's. So that'll be 2.5799. For x2, we're going to use 2.5799, plug it in for x of n. We get 2.5733. And if we do the same thing for x3 and x4, we end up getting the same answer. So it's safe to say that our other solution is roughly 2.5733.